And the key, if you want to build habits that last, if you want to change the way that you interpret cues. Usually when people think about building better habits, they optimize for the finish line, right? It's like, how much weight do I need to lose? How much money do I need to make? When can I finish this book? It's all focused on the result. But I think instead, if you optimize for the starting line, make it as easy as possible to start, scale it down, uh, organize your environment so that all that stuff is set up. You can prime your environment to make the future action easier, right? Like if you chop up a bunch of vegetables and fruit on Sunday, it's now easier to have a healthy snack during the week. If you set your workout clothes out the night before, it's now easier to get into the workout the next day. You do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. What do I mean by that? So often when we set about to change something or to achieve something, the first step is almost always setting a goal. Uh, and this is coming from someone like, I was very goal oriented for a long time. For the things I wanted to do in sports, the goals for the grades I wanted in class, the goals for how much money I wanted to make in my business. and Sometimes I would achieve those, but then sometimes I wouldn't. And so I had this question like, well, clearly I'm setting goals for both, so like that can't be the thing that determines it. And you see this a lot, that the, the winners and losers in a particular domain often have the same goals. Like every Olympian wants to win a gold medal. Every job candidate wants to get the job. So if the winners and the losers have the same, the same goal, then the goal cannot be the thing that distinguishes the two. And the thing that distinguishes them is the process, the system behind the goal. And this is also important because achieving a goal often only changes your life for the moment. Just take like a simple example. Say you have a messy room, you know, and you set, you get motivated and you set the goal to clean your room. Well, you can do that in an hour and then you have a clean room. But if you don't change the sloppy habits that led to a messy room in the first place, then you just end up with a dirty room again. So it's like treating a symptom without treating the cause. And habits are, are a better solution in that case, because if you fix the inputs, the outputs fix themselves automatically, right? You don't have to fight uh, to have a clean room if you have clean habits. And I think that that's true in a larger sense as well, right? Yeah. People want outcomes. They want to earn more money or lose weight or be more productive or reduce stress. But the outcome is not the thing that needs to change. It's the system that precedes it. So the first stage of every habit is a cue. The second stage is a craving or some kind of prediction that your brain makes. The third stage is the response. And then the fourth stage is the reward. So mm -hmm. the question I had that, that no model I could find could solve in, in any good way or explain in any good way was why can the same person respond to the same cue in a different way? So let's say you get into the habit of going to the gym at five o'clock every day, but then sometimes work gets busy and you don't go to the gym at five o'clock. Current models don't explain that very well because it's like, well, the cue is five. You should be going to the gym right now. It says you, the routine follows automatically after the cue. So what's going on there? Mm. And I think these four stages explain it, which is you see the cue or you experience a cue and then your craving or your prediction differs based on your current state. So the way that you interpret the cues in your life is contingent upon the current state that you're in. The way you're feeling. Right. Um, and also other things like your beliefs mm. or your identity, the social group that you're part of, right? So like if you're in a different group, then maybe you interpret things in a different way. So what you choose is contingent upon how you interpret the cues in your life. Mm. Um, so then, how do we change what we interpret? Society leans heavily on us all. Let's say, so just some broad examples. Uh, you walk into an elevator and you turn around to face the front. You have a job interview and you wear a suit and tie or a dress or something nice. There's no reason it has to be that way, right? Like you could face the back of the elevator. You could wear a swimsuit to a job interview, but you don't do that because it violates the shared norms of the group, mm -hmm. right? It violates the shared society, expectations yeah. of what that society has. That's true not only in a broad sense that we're part of these tribes, like big tribes, you know, what it means to be a Christian or to be American or to be uh, Australian or whatever, but it's also true in the small tribes that we belong to, what it means to be a neighbor on this street or a member of your local CrossFit gym or to volunteer for a local organization. All of those tribes, all of those groups that you belong to have a set of shared expectations, a set of shared norms. And the key, if you want to build habits that last, if you want to change the way that you interpret cues, is to join a group where your the desired behavior is the normal behavior. There are plenty of people who they want to work out, but going to the gym feels like a lot to them. Uh, it feels hard, feels like a sacrifice. But there are also people who go to the gym every week and it's just normal. It doesn't feel like an obligation. That's the desired behavior is the normal behavior. It's their lifestyle. Right. Same thing for uh, musicians. You know, like if you want to learn an instrument, 
hang out with people who play all the time. You know, like if you hang out with a bunch of musicians, it's like, well, yeah, that's what we, we do. All yeah, day. we play four days a week. If we play seven days a week, yeah. because it just happens. That's that's what the tribe does. The caveat to this, and the thing that I don't see people mention a lot, is that the reason social norms influence our behavior so much is because we want to belong to the tribe. We want to be friends mm-hmm. with those people, and so we don't want to lose the friendship or lose belonging over violating the norm. So the key, I think, is to join a group where your desired behavior is a normal behavior, and you already have something else in common with that group. So don't just join a new tribe because they have the desired behavior. Also try to find a way that you can overlap with them. Find some shared context. Some other stuff too, yeah. That you can bond over. Cue, craving, response, reward. Okay, and what's the response? So this is mostly about making it easy. Um, so this is the habit itself, and the easier a habit is, the less friction there's associated with a habit, the more likely you're going to be to do it. So the way that I like to describe this, imagine you have like a hose, right, and there's a bend in the middle. There's a little bit of water trickling out. If you want to increase the amount of water going through the hose, you have two options. You could either crank up the valve uh, and force more water through, or you could just remove the bend and let it flow through naturally. And a lot of the time, advice is centered on cranking up the valve. It's like you need to try harder, you need grit, you need perseverance, you need motivation, you need to overcome the obstacles in your life. And all those things are fine, but I think they're all short-term solutions. You might be able to do that for a day or a week, but I've never consistently seen someone stick to positive habits in a negative environment. It's really hard to fight that day in and day out. The solution, I think, is to reduce friction. And there are a ton of ways you can do this. One way is just to scale the habit down, make it as easy as possible. People have heard things like this before, start small, small steps, whatever. But even when you know you should start small, it's still really easy to start too big. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, say you want to get in shape and you're like, all right, I want to run a couple days a week, but I know I should start small, so I'll only run for 15 minutes. But even that is like way bigger than what I'm talking about. I mean, it should be so small that you, in the book I call it the two minute rule, but you should downscale any habit to fit within two minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, I want to go for a run three days a week, My habit is I put on my running shoes and I step out the door. Anything else that happens after that is just... Yes. Sometimes people resist that because they're like, well, this sounds kind of like a mental trick, right? Like I know the real goal isn't just to put my shoes on. I know the real goal is to go for a run. So if you feel that way, my suggestion would be only do the first two minutes for the first few weeks because what you need to do is master the art of showing up. I had a reader who ended up losing over hundred pounds. And one of the things that he did was he went to the gym, but he wasn't allowed to stay for longer than five minutes. So he would show up, be there, do like half an exercise, five minutes would go, he'd leave. He did this for like six weeks. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds silly because it's the opposite. Just work out for a half hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what he was doing was mastering the art of showing up. And a habit must be established before it can be improved, right? If you don't establish the habit, there's nothing to optimize. If you're not showing up at the gym every day, you don't even, who cares about what workout you're doing? You're not even there. Be the person who shows up and puts their running shoes on every day before you worry about how far you're running and what kind of workout you're doing and all that type of stuff. Usually when people think about building better habits, they optimize for the finish line, right? It's like, how much weight do I need to lose? How much money do I need to make? Um, you know, how, when can I finish this book? 
It's all focused on the result. But I think instead, if you optimize for the starting line, make it as easy as possible to start, scale it down, uh, organize your environment so all that stuff is set up. This is another strategy for making it easy, which is that you can prime your environment to make the future action easier, right? Like if you chop up a bunch of vegetables and fruit on Sunday, it's now easier to have a healthy snack during the week. If you set your workout clothes out the night before, it's now easier to get into the workout the next day. But doing all that stuff to make it easy to show up, that is probably the more important piece early on. The fourth one, and this is crucial for getting a habit to stick, is the reward or the outcome. Every behavior is followed by some kind of outcome. This is just basic cause and effect. Um, and if the immediate outcome is favorable, is enjoyable, you have a reason to repeat it in the future. If you feel good, if you feel satisfied right after you do something, then it's like this positive emotional signal and it's like, yeah. again. You can see this actually business is a really interesting example with this. There are a lot of products and some of the most successful products have some type of immediate satisfaction that is layered into them. So uh, toothpaste is a very common example. There's no reason a toothpaste needs to taste like mint, but it does because the minty flavor and the refreshingness of it, it makes your, it gives your mouth this clean feel. Mm -hmm. It's more satisfying. So you have a reason to do it again in the future. So there are a variety of examples like this. The key is it needs to be immediate. In the book, I refer to this as the cardinal rule of behavior change, which is behaviors that are immediately rewarded get repeated. Behaviors that are immediately punished get avoided. And it's really about the speed of how quickly you feel successful. If it feels good, you have a reason to do it again. <laughs>